grace and peace to all the people of God. It is my honor and privilege to worship God with you this afternoon in celebration of the life and legacy of the Reverend Absalom Jones, the first African-American priest ordained in the Episcopal Church, founder of the similarly named African Episcopal Church in St. Thomas in Philadelphia. Many thanks to the Union of Black Episcopalians, especially to Shahar Weaver, who extended the informal invitation, and to Christopher Griffin, who extended the formal invitation, and attended to the protocols that made our time together possible. As a womanist, theologian, teacher, preacher, and mother, I'm actually thrilled that your focus for this particular day in the life of the Episcopal Church honoring Absalom Jones, which is also Valentine's Day, <laughs> is anti-racism from a womanist perspective. For black women, sexism is compounded with racism and discrimination, and the sexism they experience is often complicated further with the rigors of poverty. Racism is the idea, feeling, and belief that people of color are secondary inferior creatures to white people, and that it is the prerogative of whites to be symbolic of what is divine and representative of what is fully human. As a womanist, my foundational idea, feeling, and belief rooted in my experience of my Creator as all-loving, all-just, all-wise, all-providing, and all-good, is that all persons bear as fully as all other persons the image and imprimatur of divine reality. This means that I am, as a black woman, genetically encoded with something of divine truth and covered over as this may be by internalized oppression or simply by a warrior's weariness. I have an obligation to discover it continuously. Anti-racism from a woman's perspective has to be shored up by deep historical analysis of what womanist ethicist Marcia Riggs called interstructured oppression of the ways in which race, class, gender, and sexual oppression relate to one another for those of us who are serious about human liberation and church, that has to be us. Yes. For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is the church. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Anti-racism <laughs> training from a womanist perspective then has to spring from and inculcate among future womanists like my child and my godchild who are here today. And for womanist sympathizers, the audacity and courage to arise out of the dust and shake ourselves and throw off that servile fear that the habits of interstructured oppression and bondage trained us up in. This means that you and I have to remember retail and even value the whole outrageous and painful story of racism in America so that the healing of all people of goodwill that, that all people of goodwill seek can actually find. It is after, after all a story whose end is yet to be told. But I love this story of Absalom Jones because he was a true prince of the church, not merely because he chose the Episcopal Church when he could have been a Methodist lady, <laughs> but because in 1778 he understood the nature of interstructured oppression, even if he could not then name it. A Russian proverb says that to understand is to stand under. It is to support one who may be weaker or stronger than you. But the point is, you stand under them so that they may lift 
lifted up to where they belong. In and not out of family connection. In and not out of the communion of saints. In and not out of the public arena where the common good can be mutually decided upon and enacted. To understand is to stand under. It is to demonstrate with your feet the deep stirrings of your heart. Michelle Obama comes to mind as a modern example. But in 1770, Absalom Jones married Mary King. In 1778, he purchased her freedom so that their children would be born free and years later purchased his own in 1785. A better example of princely chivalry and romantic love could not be had on Valentine's 